morning good sunday morning we pray your day has began absolutely wonderful come on here i say go on get your bibles get your front row seat and come on let's sit together while we can break the word of life together mm -hmm. on this uh pentecost sunday that so many people are celebrating around the world amen mm -hmm. We want to welcome you into the live stream. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, y'all. It, it's live today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the live stream sanctuary, mm -hmm. virtual sanctuary for mm -hmm. Berean Family Worship Center, mm -hmm. where I am Dr. Uh, Joycelyn Pernell Henderson. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And this is the senior pastor of Berean, one Dr. Walter Henderson. The third. That's him. Praise Amen. God. Good morning Glory again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. For the joy of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Y'all need Thank to pray you, right now for joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God. I'm going to go right into the word. I say get your Bibles mm -hmm. and get comfortable as we together um, share the word of God. And I am going to be reading from Psalms 17, and I'm going to be reading a few of those verses, amen? This uh, was dropped in my spirit on yesterday evening, and it was good to me, so I truly believe this morning that every word of God is good. Yes, Praise it God. is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 17, and we're going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. And it says, O Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. Mm -hmm. Declare me innocent, for ye, you see those who do right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's a good word right there. Thank he you, sees Lord. everybody that does right. No matter if nobody else sees it, the Lord sees it. Hallelujah. You have tested my thoughts, mm -hmm. my God, and examined my heart in the night season. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am determined not to sin in what I say. Mm -hmm. I have followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. Mm -hmm. My steps have stayed on your path. And I have not wavered from following you. This last verse, though, number six, really did it and sealed it for me. Mm -hmm. I am praying to you, O oh God, mm -hmm. because I know you will answer, O oh God. Bend down your ear and listen as I pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to Thank God. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God. a tremendous word that, that God has given us mm -hmm. that he will bend down his ear and listen to us. When we pray, hallelujah, maybe nobody else is listening this morning, but we know that God is. Father, we just thank you, thank you Father. for being our Lord, our thank Savior, you, and our God. Hallelujah. Thank you that you are the glory and the lifter of our head. Yes, you are God. We welcome you, Father God. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. We also welcome you, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. inside of this sanctuary Praise where the God. believers have joined mm -hmm. to hear what the Spirit of the living God oh, would name, say Father. to each one of us. Praise. Individually and collectively you, as a body of believers. Mm -hmm. We say even now, God, sanctify us again. Mm -hmm. Sanctify this word, that Father, that it will be a fresh word mm -hmm. coming off of the altar of God. And it will burn up everything Praise that God. is not like you. Mm -hmm. God, the word of God said that David said that you would bow your knee mm -hmm. and you would bow your ear mm -hmm. to hear when he would begin to pray. Praise we God. believe the same thing this morning. Thank that you, your ear gates are now open mm -hmm. to hear what we are going to say this morning. Praise and God. I believe even through the night season, mm -hmm. you've judged our heart. Mm -hmm. Even when people try to judge our heart, mm -hmm. you have judged our heart and your word has declared Praise back God. to us. You found nothing wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you for that word. Thank, Thank you, you for that encouragement Thank this morning. You, Lord. And we God. say even now mm -hmm. that we desire, desire to do your will. Mm -hmm. We delight in walking after your counsel, Hallelujah. God. Praise and we God. say even now 
that you will strengthen us, Praise encourage God. us, mm-hmm. build us up in the things of the Praise Lord. God. Cause us to mount up this morning. Hallelujah. Every one of us, mm-hmm. like weeds with like an eagle, mm-hmm. and to run and not get weary, mm-hmm. and to walk and not faint. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, God. And thank you, Lord God. For whose we belong to. Thank you, Lord. So we are confident tonight. Yes. We are confident this morning. Yes. That, Father, that you are in the midst of us. Hallelujah. And we know that right well. Praise we God. We bless you now we as we eat you. your word. And we taste and see that it is good. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you, we God. We give you praise. Yes. We give you thanksgiving. In Jesus', Jesus name. Jesus' name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, go out and be a witness for him. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's on you, Pastor. All right. Praise <laughs> God. Well, I want to say good morning to you. And on this Pentecost Sunday that was celebrated at 50 days after the Passover yes. for us, the church. That's when the Holy Spirit was sent back to confirm that the blood of Jesus had been accepted in heaven. Praise God. And so God (laughs) sent it back. And now that was an acceptance. Praise God. And the church itself was birthed. And so we give God praise, glory and honor. Also, just before I get into word, I also want to just encourage you as well. Praise God. God, we are what we eat. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Lord. And what we feast on, praise God. Just like in the natural, whatever you eat, the Bible said, I mean, not the Bible, but it told <laughs> us that whatever we eat, we become, praise yes, God. Yes, we do. <laughs> and so let's make sure we're eating the word. And we're spending many time in the word. We are all aware of the situation that's going on in our country, within our cities. Yes. And praise God. You know, we, we need to make sure that we're spending more time with the Lord in yes, prayer. Thank you, Lord. That's and a good in word. word. In his word, praise God rather than feasting on continuously the news. Because let me tell you, again, you will become what you behold. And so the more you behold something, the more it conforms you and your thought processes and these things. And we need to be rooted in God's word. Yes, come on. And let God's word speak to us and tell us because that's God's wisdom. Yes. And we are born from above. We are of the kingdom of God. Glory. And we try to do things in the kingdom way. Yes. Amen. So I just want to encourage Hallelujah. you with that. We are all aware of what's going on. And praise God, we're all praying. And we're watching to see the process, what's happening. But yes, thank you, Lord. Lord, our eyes is up on you. Up on you, oh God. Hallelujah. So we want to make sure we encourage you in that way. Thank praise you, Lord God. God. Thank so you. So you can maintain your peace. You can maintain your objectivity based upon God's truth. What does the word say? All right. Hallelujah. Well, let's get in. Praise God. We started last time on a series entitled Power to Tread. Upon serpents. Mm-hmm. And last time we talked about Satan's primary tool, which is pride. Amen. And so we want to continue this time. I want to talk about be sober and be vigilant this particular time. But wow. pride will run through all of this. And praise God. I want us to begin to take a look at this and see because what my assignment is through this series is to uncover how the devil works. Yes, thank so you. So that Lord. we will not be continually be defeated, but we will continually have the victory that Jesus has died. Victory belongs to Jesus. It belongs to Jesus, and therefore it belongs <laughs> to us. Praise God. So it's going to be very, very important yes, that we understand it. We showed you last time how Satan does and his pride. And we talked about how he tries to stay in the background so we don't know he's there. Yes, come But he's on. the one causing all of this. And so we talked about, let me just review very, very quickly one part we talked about on last time. And then I want to launch right into what I want to show you today. Each one of these, we're going to be really uncovering him, showing how he works so that we will not fall uh, you know, uh, uh, into the traps that yes, he set for us. Right. Last time in the, we talked about Jesus gave power and authority. In Luke the ninth chapter, verse 1 through 2, and also verse 6, in that we talked about how that, uh, praise God, that now then verse uh, 1 through 2 said, then he called the 12 disciples together, yeah. gave them power and authority, look at this, over all devils. <laughs> Praise God. Every one of them. <laughs> and to cure diseases. Yes, thank you, Lord. Verse 2 says, He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Glory. So you and I need to be preaching <laughs> the kingdom, not just born again. <laughs> That's the entrance point where we should be preaching the kingdom. kingdom the of kingdom God. of God is what God is all about. Amen. That's what He sent John to preach. Jesus preached it. The disciple preached it. You and I should be preaching yes, the kingdom. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God 
and to heal the sick. Why to heal the sick? Because that was to manifest, to show that they had been sent from God That's and good. that his power is manifest. Verse 6 said, and they departed and went through the town preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So we also talked about in the 10th chapter, praise God, uh, same identical thing. Uh, in fact, I want to make sure I'm getting the right scriptures on it. In the 10th chapter we talked about last time, verses 1 and then verses 5 through 9. So let's look at that again. Verses 1 said, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them to and to before his face into every city and place. Look at this. Whether he himself would come. God's going to send you and I places he wants to come. Praise God. And so you and I are not there to represent us. We're not here to represent the world. We're not here to represent the world system. We're there to represent Christ. If you are a believer in Christ, then you are to represent the kingdom of God. You're to represent Christ. You're not there to represent yourself, your feelings, your emotions. And so that's why we can't get drawn into this world system. We are there to represent the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors for Christ. And ambassadors who will go for another country, a foreign country. That's where we are because our citizenship is in heaven. Yes, Praise God. Come on. We're in a foreign land right now. Praise God. But in, when ambassadors sent to a foreign land, they're there to represent the homeland. They're there to represent the one who appointed them. That is so good. That would be Jesus to Christ. Amen. So stop representing us and our feelings, our emotion. Let's represent the kingdom of God and our Christ. Glory, Amen. Glory. So not only that, if we go down again to uh, verse 5, he said, And to whatsoever house you enter first say, Peace be to the first say, Peace be to this house. Glory to God. Amen. And he said, And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Your peace will rest upon it. Well, you can't give somebody something you don't have. Hallelujah. If you full of turmoil, you full of, how are you going to bring peace into this situation? Amen. God sent us to be blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We got too many folks running around not trying to bring peace. We become part of the turmoil ourselves. Praise God. Let's be reminded we are peacemakers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, he said that if your peace will rest upon it, if not, it shall return you. Now, the son of peace, we talked about this last time and also in our group study we talked about. The son of a thing means you are the, the son of whoever you are following in that. And so Jesus is uh, the God our peace, and we are the son of the, that his peace, praise God, because we're not having our peace itself. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, yes, not as the world give, give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we are the sons of his peace. Amen? And so he said, listen, so the son of anything, then he said, if the son of peace be there, in other words, that person is ready to receive that peace. That person is a person of peace. Not their peace, but your peace will rest upon it. Really? God has placed a peace in you Glory that can change God. an environment. Hallelujah. You can change a situation if you understand that it's you. So if you take turmoil into there, then you don't have anything to give but turmoil. Really? Uh, you understand what I said? Yes, sir. Praise God. Good. He's continuing. And he said, and in the same house remain eating and drinking, something that they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that they set before you. Mm -hmm. Then he said, and heal the sick Glory. that are therein, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. See, God wants us to, man he wants to manifest his healing virtue through us. Pray, if these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, yes, that they cast come out demons, come on, lay hands on the sick. He talked about all these things. So then we should declare the kingdom of God is coming to you. Glory. Praise God. We're not just trying to get them born again. We're, we're reflecting the kingdom. The kingdom has healing in it. Mm -hmm. The kingdom has deliverance in it. Yes, the kingdom has peace in it. Praise <laughs> God. And so if they come and look at us and we ain't got no peace. <laughs> they, well, I don't know if I want to sign up for that. That's all I'm saying to you. So he now has the, tw the 12. Here are the other 70. We got 82 of them. We talked about this on last time. Amen? Now, when we see this, praise God, I want us to see when Jesus talked about uh, this peace and to the 12, initially he talked about him. He said, I've given you power. We said that Greek word is dynamis. It means a power, a force, a miraculous power. And he said, I've given you authority. Yeah, we said that on. Greek word is exousia. And it is a delegated superhuman influence. It's a right. It's a jurisdiction. It's a control. 
And so Jesus said, I'll give you all power over all devils. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. I'll Hallelujah. give you authority over this devil. Come on, you need to declare that I have authority, I have authority, authority over all devils. Over all devils. Now God wants you and I to reflect that authority, but we talked about some things and we'll get back to that just briefly. Lord, that authority God. only works with our submission. Yes, come on. It's called proximity. The closer mm-hmm. you are to the, the one who's giving you the authority, the more authority you have. My, the my, farther my. you are away from the one who's giving you the authority, the less authority you have. Oh, Amen? Yes. So I need you to understand that that's how this kingdom thing works. All right, praise God. So he said, you have authority as long as you submit it to me. Yes. If you're not submitting to me, the devil is saying, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Jesus, I know. Yes. I know. Joyce and I know, Come on here. But, but who are you? Praise <laughs> God. So we need to have an understanding That's that this shot. authority is really, really That's important. All right. So we find that in Luke, the 10th chapter again, verse 17. Let's go back there. We're still talking last time. And then we're going to go, go to verse 17 down the 10th chapter of Luke. The 10th chapter of Luke, verse 17 said, and the 70 return again. Look at this. With joy, uh, uh, saying, uh. Lord. <laughs> Even the devils are subject unto us, wait a minute, through thy name. That's it. As long as we're doing it for your glory, yes, as long as Lord. we're doing it the way you told us to do it, as long as we're submitted to you, these devils are subject yes, to us. Now don't go out there, you devil, you know, you, you ain't submitted to us, the devil like, please. <laughs> I'm going to chase you out of here. Listen, so it's going to be very, very important that we understand it. Well, why don't it? Because it, it really has to do with our submission. Yeah, that's good. It really has to do everything with our submission to the Lord God, first and foremost, and then it goes from there. Praise God. So, again, and he said unto them, and he talked about, we won't go into that, but hell, Satan lightning from heaven. We, we uh, lightning fall from heaven. We covered that last time. He said, behold, I give unto you power, exousia, to tread on <laughs> serpents and scorpions and over all the power, the menace of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means <laughs> shall hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, don't rejoice in that now. Don't get all hyped about that. That the spirits are subject to you, yes, but on. rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Glory, Glory to God. To Amen. God. So he talked about it. He said, I've given you that power. Look, the word tread there, we talked about last time, the Greek word is patio. It means to trample. Really? It means to crush with the feet <laughs> over all the power of the enemy. Now, we talked about, he said, that serpent, that means the serpent is sly, cunning, awful, and malicious. And then we talked about the scorpion through the ideal of steam. We said that the serpent and the scorpion inject poison. Yes, they do. Which is used to debilitate or immobilize the victim. So Satan is looking to immobilize you and me. In other words, make us ineffective. Yes, come on. Amen. That he has control over us or dominate not only our thought life, hence our behavior. All right. So this is going to be very important that we understand this because of the different name that God will give us through the scripture tells us how this devil operates. Now, we'll see some little bit more of that today. And we need to keep these things in mind. But he said, I've given you power to tread upon, to yeah, crush. Christ. But again, that's only if we are submitted mm-hmm. to him. All right. Praise God. God. So now I want us to look at today. First Peter five, eight through eleven. This is where we're going today. Praise God. And uh, as I said, we're going to be talking about be sober and be vigilant. Yes, Praise God. So let's go to 1 Peter 5 and then verse 8. Now in this, in verse 8, coming up to this point, he's talked to the leaders. And he talked to the leaders that they need to be uh, to a point that they are ready. Praise God. To uh, watch over the flock of God, to feed them. He said, not as lords over them. Don't be lords sure. over them. Thank you, all of, all of that. Praise God. But he said, by your example. Really? And so it's very important as leaders, we set the example. That's Regardless good. of you, the pastor, you, the, whatever the leadership. And all of us are leaders in some form, whether it's our own home, our company, over our children. We should set the example so we can look at our children, look at each other, yes, and on. say, follow me. That's good. As I follow Christ. Amen? See, so leadership is something somebody can't give to you. It's My something you God. have to be or do. Ooh. Praise God. Leaders don't sit and follow everybody else's example, but leaders set the example 
of Christ's yes. likeness. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Are you a leader in your home? Yes. Are you a leader to your wife or to your husband or to your children? Are you a leader? Do you set the example of Christ's likeness? That is See, true. that's when God honor you. When we are not setting that example, that means, and we're going to talk about a little bit today, that we're doing the devil's work. Really? All right? So this is going to be very, very important. So all of that is going. So he's dealing with them about, listen, yes, you are the leader. Yes, you are over the flock of God, but you should be there to serve them. Really? Amen. You're not there to lord over them. Yes, come all on. All right, praise God. I, I'm Christ, and then I made the disciples sit down and say, I'm going to wash your feet. That's what he did. I'm here to serve you. I'm not here the Lord over you, even though I am your Lord. And so, now that's the example we lead. So we get to verse 5 now in this praise God. He said, likewise now, in the same way, ye younger submit yourself therefore to the elder. Yet all of you be subject, look at this, one to, I don't care what your position and title is, y'all need to be subject one to another. Be subject to righteousness. Be subject to what is right and honorable. And be clothed with humility. Now, cold means, again, whenever you sit in script, that means something you don't naturally have. When you say cold, that means you got to put it on and put on humility. Amen? You got to, and I got to make up my mind in the morning, I'm going to put on humility. Because if I don't put it on, I'm not clothed in it. Yes, come on. Are you understanding what I just said? Now, come on, let's stay with it. For God resisted who? The pride. See, the devil will let us know, and we're not understanding. Well, I'm saying, I'm this one. When I'm taking that spirit, what I need to understand, God said, listen, I resist you. Now, that word resist in the Greek means that it's like you're standing and going to do something, and God is in your face said, I'll never let it happen. Really? I resist pride. I will never let pride win. Really? So some of us think everybody else resisting us. It's God resisting you. God resists. That means he stands to confront you and say, I will never let pride win. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That is right there. <laughs> My God, I felt that almost. Through the, anyway, listen. I want us to understand Lord, this. This is how God is working with us. So he, he, listen to what he said. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Grace is unearned. Yes. Grace is something God gives you freely, not by your works. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. But God gave it to you. All right? So God gives grace to the humble. Verse 6. Humble yourself, therefore, what I just told you, mm -hmm. then, come on, you need to humble yourself under the mighty hand yes, of God, come on. that he may exalt you, where? In due In time. Due time. God said there's a certain yes. time, sometimes we're not ready to be exalted. Really? So God's going to leave us on the back side of the mountain where Moses was, <laughs> I'm back there with the dust, and, you know, the sandals and smelling, you see, yes. doing whatever. God said, until your time. Ooh. Moses had to stay there 40 years. Now, come on, let's get humble so it don't take us all that time. Praise Thank God. The Lord. And God said, because I want to exalt you, but it's a due time. It's a set time. There's a certain people. There's a certain situation that I want to bring you from the back to the front. Wait on it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, go on. He said, casting your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Yes, he does. Verse 8, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary. Look at this. He said, you, you better be sober be good because your adversary, the Ooh. devil, as a roaring lion, he's not one, but he's oh, acting yeah. like one, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise God. Let's get back. Look at our lesson. So. In this lesson, we talk about be sober, be vigilant. Praise God. Now, be sober here means he said, be alert. He said, hey, wake up. Wake up. You, you need to stay awake. Have you ever talked to somebody and, and you told them, I'm watching? No, no, no. Listen, put that down. I need you to be alert. Listen, this is serious business, man. You need to be, look, get your eyes on, get them open, man. And so this is what God is saying. Hey, you need to know who's after you. Yes, come on. You need to know he's after you every day. He's plotting against you. I'm going to show you this. He's plotting against your life. Hey, wake up. Stop all this foolishness. You better get away because there's someone out there trying to take you down. Yeah. Someone out there is fighting you come for on, your destiny because they know and believe what come. God is about to do in your life. All right. Praise God. So be alert. Be vigilant. That is, keep awake. All right, man? So that's what he's telling him. He said, why? Your adversary. Now watch this. See, he's given us again insight into the devil, who he is and what he's trying to accomplish in our life. Adversary that means an opponent in a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. 
Oui. A person who is opposing on the opposite side. She's going to get Revelation 12 for me. Let me explain this why she's getting that. Now, uh, this is very, very important. It's, you know, in the courtroom, you have a defendant and a plaintiff. You have a plaintiff who brought a charge against the defendant. And so there is a persecuting attorney. And you understand? He, he's there as a prosecutor. He's here to prosecute this. Then you have your defense attorney. And then you have the judge. Now, all the other people in there recording, doing all that, they, but the main characters are these. All right? Now, the defendant needs someone to defend them. All right? So, now, it's important. The Bible said that the devil is an He is your opponent. He is not your friend. Come on here. He's got a lawsuit in the court of heaven against you. <laughs> he is declaring that you were doing wrong, that you broke the law, and the penalty ought to come on you. <laughs> Amen. Pray. That's what he's doing. He's doing that. He stands. Now, adversary, you've got to understand what he's doing. And so Satan is constantly in God's face. Accusing. That's my, he my, is my. an accuser. Yes, he is. He's, he's a slanderer. Praise yes. God. I'm going to show you that in a minute also. Praise God. So please understand that. I just going to read Revelation 12. Now, we talked about this when we talked about the blood speak, but I just want to bring this back to your attention. Go ahead, Sister Henderson. Revelation 12, verse 10 through 12. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. My goodness. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Now there's coming a time, because Satan still, he, he has access to heaven to come and accuse. We saw that in the book of Job. Remember that? He came when he saw all the, uh, a son of God came, he came and the Lord said, where you been? He's <laughs> up and down through heaven. <laughs> up and down in the earth. What? He's searching for somebody to destroy. Yes, come on here. He's looking for, now he ain't looking for the wicked. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> He's looking for the godly hey. man, a woman, young woman of God. And he's there. Amen? And so he has that access. But there comes a certain time when that door will be shut. He's kicked out. And when he comes in, he's going to be angry. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, uh, you're on verse 11 now? Yeah, yeah, well, I can be. It, well, it, well, no, finish where you started. It says, for the accuser of our brethren, back on 10. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which accuses them before our God day and night. How often? Day and night. Man, listen, he, that's who he is. And now, I, oh Lord, I, ooh, next week I want to show you something about what he does to try to destroy relationship. He's you an really? accuser. And we're thinking thoughts are ours. And I want you to know he's so, constantly, anyway, wait next week. Go ahead. And go. they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. I plead the blood. Glory and to God. by the word of their testimony. You got to testify to what God has said. Go ahead. And they love not their lives. Come on here. Unto the death. All right. That, 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 that's, that's the four I want you to go. I believe. Okay. You get 10 and 11. Now, here's, uh, and I'm just re revisiting this to let you know that you have an accuser. He's accusing you and I day and night. So that's why we can't leave sin not done because he has a right to bring that charge because we got some outstanding come stuff on, ain't been dealt on. with. When you and I refuse to repent, whether Jesus died for all of us, he did. But the, he said that we need to confess our sin. What? Yes. The confession ain't for God. That's right. The confession is for us. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. We don't mind confessing what God said. You know, yes. he, he said he blessed it right. He, he, he makes me prosper. <laughs> we, we, we confess all the wonderful things, but we don't come here and confess the other thing. All right? We have to do that. All right? Now, look. If you are not opposing Satan, he is for you. <laughs> you Listen. Let me tell you something. As long as you walk with him, doing his bidding, doing his thing, pray God, doing the way he said do it, the world system you bought into, you did all that, Satan ain't opposing you. He already know. Look at it. He knows that you will eventually self-destruct. Look, you self-check. And we just had that when we playing basketball. <laughs> if the guy couldn't shoot the ball, they said he self-checked. You got to hold him. <laughs> Listen, God said, uh, Devilson said, hey, leave that guy alone. He self-checked. He will destroy himself because oh, he's on that path. I don't need to keep running him. My, my, he blamed my. me for stuff. I ain't even there. I've set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that you may live. That's the word. You are choosing destruction by choosing Satan's way. Praise God. 
So that's why the Bible said, don't love this world. He means this system that is set up by Satan. He's governing this system. This foolishness that's going on is his design. Yeah. But he likes to stay behind the scene so all of us can continue to blame one another. Please understand something. That listen, God's going to deal with unrighteousness. Yes, he is. God has set up systems. We have court systems. We have all these things to help with all of this. But please understand behind all this. He said our warfare is not with flesh and blood. Come on here. Our warfare is with spiritual power and wickedness and yes. place, high places. So we can't not be ignorant of his devices and how he works. All right? Actually, if we are walking in line with him, he is actually our master. Satan Ooh, is. Wee. Romans 6.16 6, said, Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are whom you obey. My, Whether so of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. If you're doing Satan work, then that's your master. So I don't need to check you. I got you already in control. Let me go after them righteous folks. I want to keep accusing them. And yes, he's accusing you. Your, your own doing. lifestyle is accusing you. Oui. Lord have mercy. Oui. Now notice this. He said the word devil. The word devil there is diablos. It is the word transducer. And it means to speak maliciously, falsely, to slander. Help us, Lord. Please understand this spirit. And I'll just a little bit in here. But Satan is going to try to get you and me to slander each other. He's speaking slander to me about my wife. He's speaking Amen. slander to Amen. my wife about me. He's speaking slander to about your relatives. And I'll get into that next week. I want to really get in. Please understand, we think these are our thoughts. He accuses us. My, my, my. He is the accuser, especially of the brethren. Now, he ain't got to accuse the folks that ain't the brethren. <laughs> <laughs> they doing unrighteousness. <laughs> They're living in unrighteousness. And so he stayed behind the scene. He tried to make us think that it's us, or these are our thoughts, and I'm going to show you there how we can determine where these thoughts are coming from and how we overcome them. Is that all right? Yes, sir. We got to uncover this devil. Uncover it. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> so he is, look at this, and when this happened, it gives, he wants us as righteous to act unrighteous, so now he can accuse us before the whole world. Ooh Them people talk about they're Christian. Look how they behave. Look how they act. Say that. It brings shame to the gospel when you and I don't act like sons of God. Oh, God, help us, Lord. I'll just give you one. First Timothy 4, 5, 14 said, I will therefore that the young women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. My. In other words, stay in the word. So, look, the devil's already a liar. He's already a slanderer, but don't give ammunition to him. Don't give him no fire. He, he don't need it, because he's going to lie anyway. And you need to know there's a lying spirit in this world. He's going to lie, and he's going to try to make those who are right look wrong. And if you're not discerning it, we will believe every lie that's coming. We can't do that. We have to understand that there is a devil over this system. And he guides this system. He creates lies that cause confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. That's right. If we have confusion, yes, come on. guess who's in the thing? It's the devil. Whether it's in my home, your home, in the White House, in, the, in, in this house, or in this city of that. Yes, come on. Satan is behind all of this. Yes, it is. And if we don't discern that, we'll be walking right with him. Operating Lord. with him. Help us, Lord. And so, praise God, it's going to be important for us to do this. He, the Bible says he's seeking. The Greek word is zetio, and it means to plot against life, to divide. He's seeking whom he can plot against their mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. He wants to divide them. He don't want them walking in the will of God to the thing God is calling them in this planet to do. And they think God is the one keeping them from it. It's not God. It's the devil. Yes, come and on. God, and God said, you need, and I need to wake up to who's behind all of this so we don't do it. The Bible said, whom we are to resist, step back. That means solid. Mm. That means resisting strong in the faith. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, Again, we got that proximity. I can't resist him unless I'm close to God, unless I'm submitted to God. I'm trying to rebuke the devil, and, and you know what? I'm treating you like you ain't nothing. And the devil said, please, you walk in with me. You, you Look at your action. That's just like me. That's the way I work. You rebuke and he laughs. He's like, go ahead and leave that person alone. You don't, you don't have to worry about that person. 
they are where they buke her out. Praise God. Because they are not submitted. I know when people are submitted. Now, let's go back to Jesus. Remember that? When the devil came, and then uh, right after we talked about this previously, but after Jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tested, the Bible said, Satan came to him three times. You remember that. And Satan was quoting word to him. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. <laughs> and Jesus said, no, no, no. I rightfully divide this. <laughs> Amen. I'm rightfully dividing this word. What you said is in the Bible. But look, if I go through that, that's not true. You took something out of context to try to get me to. Really? Do you know that's what the devil tried to get you and I to do? You, I, in, in, in the Bible? Yeah, you better get the fullness of that and get a revelation of that so you and I can walk in accordance with that. And so he finally, each time, what did Jesus say? It is what? Written. You and I need to understand the <laughs> power of God's word. Yes, the Bible word. said you got born again by the word of God. Mm -hmm. God spoke the world into being. Hallelujah. The Bible said death and life is in the power. Yes. You and I need to understand the power of words. Yes, sir. But especially God's word. Hallelujah to God. When you and I come under submission of God and speak God's word, that devil will bag up. Hallelujah. Notice that the devil, each time Jesus said, it is written, he didn't come yeah, to argue He said, no, I know you know it, and I know you believe it. And he didn't be arguing with you about that. Let me try another thing. And each time Jesus said, it is written. Jesus didn't say, look, I got power to tell you. You don't want me to thump your head or nothing, do you? Jesus said, let me just put the word. Put the word on it. And I got faith in that <laughs> word. And the devil, he showed him. I ain't got no argument. You and I keep letting him give us thoughts that are contrary to the word. And instead of casting that image down, casting imagination down, every high thing that exalts itself against to take every thought captive. Yeah. We are to take every thought captive to the beauty of the Christ. Well, the five that you let him get through is enough for him my, my, to my. cause confusion in your life and in my life. Yes. Are you hearing what I see? Yes, sir. I Praise am. God. I want you to understand <laughs> this. All right. So now what we see here is that after, look at verse 10 and 11. Praise God. This is powerful. This is powerful. Look at verse 10 and 11. In the first Peter 5, verse 10 and 11. This is still in our text. I want you to see something. But the God of all grace... Who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered a while. Make you perfect. Establish. Strengthen. And settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So be it God. Now watch it. God said after you suffer a while. He said when you go through this. That means sometimes you're going to suffer. Because you're staying. You're resisting the devil. You, you, you want to get in your emotions. You want to yeah. start a fight. You want to do this. You yeah, wanna, right. All that. He said, no, no. It, it gonna, the devil going to take. Look how she getting over on you. Look how he getting on. You, you better straighten these people out. You better, see, the devil, because you're emotion and raging, and that's what he likes. The Bible oh, said, be angry. Yes, yeah, come on with that. But don't get in no sin now. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to reap what you sow. So, so the devil's doing that. So the Bible said, after you have suffered a while. Yes, come on. Come on. A little while, he said. A little while. He said, that's going to make you perfect. That means to repair, to adjust, to mend or restore. Oh, my. God said, you got some thinking you've been having, some behavior you've been having, some ways you've been doing. I need to mend those ways. Really? So where I'm taking you to. Because if the devil can wear you out here, I can't take you there. Really? It'll be too destructive for me. So let me. Even when I tell you to sit back, be still and know. When I tell you to be quiet, be quiet. Be quiet. Because I'm working, I'm creating a strength in you. I'm creating really? something in you. And you're going to have to discern this because the devil is behind and keep trying to work confusion. Let me mend that. Somebody, you don't trust people no more. Let me mend that. You speak whatever comes to your mind. Let me mend that. Yes. Because, see, I can only trust you so far right now. But I got something greater for you. Glory to God. I don't need you to get there and your word's going to get you in trouble. So he said, let me make you perfect. Establish means to set fast, to set in purpose, to strength. He, he said, see, I need to get your attitude and everything about you to set you where I'm taking you to. My, my, my. I want to set you, look at this, to set in purpose. See, you, you don't understand. You all over here, over to the left, to the right. I'm trying to get you on a straight track. I need to set you, set your affections, set you where you're going. 
And so you won't all let this other stuff sidetrack you. That's why we're trying to do all of these things, but we're missing that thing God has for us. And so, so God said, let me let you go through them. You're going to suffer. But you have to understand that humility is strength under power. See, when I can just say I do whatever I want to, I don't have to restrain. So I don't need no power. I'm loosey goosey, if you will. I, I I can't do this. God said, I need to get you. See, the Bible says when they came against Jesus, He said not a word. Now He could have spoke some word, could have called angels down. Man, if that was us, we could have called angels. <laughs> get them out of here. Pray God. Wipe them a hole out. Pray God. But you have to just like a disciple when they were with Jesus said, "You want us to call fire down from heaven? Get rid of this." Jesus said, "You don't know what spirit you are." That's right. You need to understand That's that right. ain't the right spirit. All right. So then finally, He said. That it will settle you. That, my, my, my. Me, that means to lay a foundation. <laughs> that means to ground you or erect you. So you'll be so grounded. The devil come, he can't move you can't at move all. It. Hallelujah. People will say stuff and you just look. And say, <laughs> Praise the Lord. And somebody will tell him, how he going to stop? For what? What good was that going to do? <laughs> that one going to tell you, that's just feeding to the frenzy. Yes. I don't have to feed into the frenzy. I know the truth. Yes, Lord. And that truth. Has made me free. That is so good. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's continue. Now, so Satan, the Bible says, he goes about seeking whom mm -hmm. he may devour. Well, if he's seeking whom he may devour, he can't devour everybody. That's right. So he's looking for somebody. Even he's talking about you. I went up and down the earth. He, he's looking as a roaring lion. He's roaring at you. And if you jump, he's, oh, he's right there. We got something here. <laughs> so if, if he says something, you jump and he, he got you. So how do he choose? Who is it that he wants? Well, so then I want you to go to Matthew, the 7th chapter, 24th verse. How does Satan determine who he can destroy? He looks to see how we are building our house. Whee! All right. Start. Matthew 7. Mm -hmm. 24 reading, through 27. Reading verse 24 through 27. All right. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended. Come on. And the floods came. Mm -hmm. And the winds blew. And beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Come on here. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, uh -oh. shall be likened unto a foolish man. Which built his house up on the sand, mm -hmm. and the rain descended, Come on. and the floods came, mm -hmm. and the winds blew, mm -hmm. and beat up on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now, now, I want you to notice something about this. First of all, there's two kinds of people here. Whee! One wise, and the other is foolish. There's two kinds of foundation, rock and sand. Come on here. And there's two kinds of results. House stood, house failed. That's good. That's good. Now, the same elements came up on both. The wise and the foolish. See, Satan trying to make us think that we're going through some default. They, they don't know what they're going through. You don't know what people are going through. <laughs> people have learned how to handle it and you have. <laughs> Just because they don't show <laughs> my face don't mean I ain't dealing with something. <laughs> now, notice that the storm, the flood... And the wind, all of that came on both groups. Yes, it, there was yes, no sir. difference. On the saved as well as the unsaved. Yes, Many sir. are the affliction of the righteous. Yes, but. But God delivers them <laughs> out of some of them. All of them. Oh, all of them. Glory Glory to God. God. If I know that in advance. They used to be falling apart at the beginning. But when I don't know that, don't yes, believe that, yes, I let the accuser accuse God before me. God don't care. I mean, I prayed in God. I mean, don't you see what I'm going through, God? See, that's what he does. But the righteous know the storm will come. Yes, sir. The righteous know there's going to be some wind and flood. But if I'm on the rock, I need you to know Hallelujah. this. Praise God that I'm coming Lord, through this thing. Lord. Hallelujah. But if God be for me, come on here. Who can be against come me? Come on. Hallelujah. So see, if I'm not grounded in the word, everything comes up sending me. I'm not settled yet. Hallelujah. I, you know, uh, uh, and God wants to settle us. Yes, he, he, he wants to get us to a place that we establish, and then He wants to get us that praise God. We are mature. He He fixes things in us that every little thing the devil does doesn't upset us. 
We know to go to a place of prayer. Yes, we God. know to get into the presence of God. God and the you. presence of God is a fullness, fullness of joy. I can go get my joy. I ain't got Hallelujah. to go the thing get straightened out. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can get it right now. Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. He, he's a shelter for me. Praise Hallelujah. God. Come on. And so I need to understand all of that. So now, Lord, praise God. <laughs> I, I want us to also see that what the key to this becoming Say the key to this, amen, is to discerning when the devil is showing up and when it's got what is going on is actually the word of God. Come on, come on. The more words you have in you and the more word you continue to place in you will cause you and I. Remember, Jesus said it is written. Jesus kept dealing with it. The devil said something. Jesus said the word. And that's what it's going to take for us. I mean, things are going to happen. Yes, but sir. if we stay and begin to quote that word and say, no, Lord, this is truth to me. It doesn't matter what it looks like. This come is true to me. On. So if you would read Psalms 119 and verse 105. Psalms 119, 105. Mm -hmm. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So first of all, what God wants you to know, I will light up your path where you're going. <laughs> I, want to, I want to light it up and show you so you don't have to be stumbling around in the darkness. And I'm going to do it with my word. You must eat, sleep, breathe, Yay. confess, meditate my word. Oh. All right. Verse 110. Look at this now. Watch this very close. This is still Psalm 119. Look at verse 110. Oh, I, the wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err it not from thy precepts. Look at this. See, Satan is constantly sitting a snare for you. Wee. He's constantly, again, he wants to destroy you. And if you're not paying attention, he has you going in the direction. But he has a snare up there for you and me. Wee. And then he catches us in the snare. And we say, God, what's going on? And God said, you weren't listening. You weren't in the word. And I need you to understand. This is that. First of all, my word is a lamp and a light. Then a few verses down, he said, because the enemy is setting a snare yes, for you. come on. But the word will cause you to be delivered. Come on, from. come on. There's some stuff you and I don't have to go through. <laughs> God doesn't want you to go through it. He's given us the word. And so you and I ain't got time for the word. The devil going to make sure we got to read everybody else. We see it everybody yes. else. You need to shut some stuff yes. off. I need to shut some stuff down. And I need to get that word in me. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, look at Psalms 91. You don't have to turn it. You can't turn it, but I'm going to read it. Psalms 91. We love quoting Psalm 91, and we should especially during this time. But now, remember the thing we've talked about previously. Now, listen. Psalm 91. 3. Surely he shall really? deliver thee <laughs> from the snare Ooh. of the fowler. And from the noise and pestilence. See, the fowler here, you need to understand, the word fowler here, it means the trapper. The oh, bait layer. Oh, yeah. So, see, that, that, that's what it means. Psalm 91, the Hebrew word that means fowler is, he's the trapper of the bait layer. Now, let me read Psalm 91, word 3. Surely he said, deliver thee from the snare of the trapper. The bait layer. And from the noise and pestilence. See, well, how is he going to do that? Some, when, when we just read 119, 105, 110, show us. The word will keep you. You'll be walking that path and that word will say, hey, look at that. There's a snare. Wee. There's a trap right there. He got it covered. See, uh, the nature of a trap or snare is that it looked like nothing dead. It looked like that solid ground oh. to walk on. It looked like this is a good place. But the trouble of it is there's something underneath it. And you and I see, because we're not spending the time in the world like we should, the devil, remember, his greatest secret is, is, is being deceptive, Ooh. is not being seen, not letting you know what's before you. God's word is shining a light on that path. Say, oh, there's a tribe with that. Praise God. And so Psalm 91 is beautiful in that. But look at Psalm 91, 13. Still Psalm 91. Thou shalt tread upon the lion. Remember what that tread means? It's a walk upon. Walk upon. Praise God. And the adder, the young lion, and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. The word will cause us to tread. That means to bend with the foot. Upon the lion, that is the roar of the wicked man, the adder, remember again, that venomous snake. I mean, that's who says it's venomous. He wants to inject this poison in. Get you in a snare and, 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 and immobilize you. You don't want to go to church? You don't want to be around the saints? You're immobilized. We're sitting there having a pity party. Wee! Listen, that's Wee! his practice. It worked. He injected this poison in us and made us think God don't care. My, my, my. Listen, God has already proven his love. Praise God. 
Okay. Now, but okay. the, but if I don't discern right. him, if I don't discern right. who this is, I think these are my thoughts. Woo. This is the devil injecting his yeah. poison into you and me. It's poison. But the Bible says, I want you to trample them under your feet. Oh, Praise God, because you know the word. <laughs> the word will judge my thoughts hey, and good. my intentions. Now, would you get this, but get the Amplified Classic. And I'm going to read the, the King James, because, and then we're going to just deal with this. The word will judge my thoughts and intentions. Hebrews 4 and 12, this is the King James. For the word of God is quick. That means it is alive. God's word is alive. It's a living thing. When you are speaking that word, you are speaking a living thing. You are releasing a living thing. Glory to God. Now, Hallelujah. Not just God's word, but let's say it's not God's word. It's your word. You're releasing something. It's alive. Now I want you to know Hallelujah. something. Death and life is in the power. You're releasing. Ooh you are releasing. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. It will help you discern, is this my soul talking or is this the spirit of God talking? The word will judge it. The word will make it right for you. Hallelujah. You're not trying to do it with our own reason. Hallelujah. And it won't work alone. God didn't design you that way. God designed you not to live by the word of God, live by the spirit of God, and that will discern for us. And of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of her. God would say, you're trying to do a good thing, but you're taking the wrong method to do it. Yes, come on. You're right to want justice in this situation. This person has done you. You're right. Justice should be done, but you are not to do it. Mm -mm -mm. You see, the word will cause me to confirm truth, but also my intentions are wrong. Yeah, you, you're giving them some money, but but the the goal is that you're trying to win them with your money. You get And so God said, giving is always good, but your motive is wrong. Your expectation is wrong. Therefore, your harvest will be wrong. Are you understand what I'm saying? That is so good. So, the son of the thoughts and tensions. All right, if you read the Amplified Classic of that. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Come on. Making it active, operative. Energizing. Listen, this word is active. It's it's operating. When you when the word of God is operating, it does something in us, and and it is energizing us, strengthening us, encouraging our hearts. Go ahead. Making it active, operative, energizing, mm -hmm. and effective. Come on. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Go in there, cut some stuff out that need to come out of you and me. <laughs> Go ahead. Penetrating. To the divided line of the breath of life, Come the on. soul, uh -huh. and the immortal spirit. Separating them. Nothing but the word. And nothing else can get in there and do that but God's word. Go ahead. And of joints and marrow. My God. Of the deepest parts of our nature. Get in that place of stuff. You got stuff <laughs> going on in you that ain't been healing. You don't even know it's there. Ooh stuff from years ago. The word get in there and dig it out and say, you know what? This is causing problems here. Go ahead. Exposing. Come on. And sifting. Yeah. And analyzing. My God. And judging. Oh, by side. The very thoughts. Yeah. And purposes of our hearts. Sometimes we are making decisions. <laughs> we believe it's right, but the word of God and judging said, no, that, that you're making a, you look, in some situations this would be okay, but in this situation, no, it is not. Help us, Lord. It's not good. That word will do that. So, see, that's why Jesus kept saying, it is written. Yeah, come on. No, I'm, I'm not going to answer you. The word is going to answer you. Yes, sir. Let the word. Huh? It, it's a lie. <laughs> and, and when Jesus was speaking that word, it was hitting Satan upside the head. Boom. And he said, okay, look on to the next one. Because look, that, that was a lick there. You see, <laughs> that word will be fighting for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Finally, you for your word, God. finally I want to close in this. Matthew 4 and 4, let me read it to you. And just, I wonder what the Amplified Classic. Could you get that? Okay. I'm reading the King James. Man shall not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. Listen, Matthew 4, 12, but he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every mm -hmm. word that proceed out of the mouth of God. See, God's word is what made us so that we could get bread. Mm -hmm. We're out there working for bread, out there working with God. said, no, no, no. You need to understand that you need to live by the word of God. The word of God will produce and give everything that you're going to need. 
everything you will ever need will come by faith in God's word. That's good. When you and I don't know the word of God, we, we set about with other inventions to do other things. And we can justify, man, I, I got the word. I got, and God wants you to. But God will give you faith to go into an area or to do something that he's placed within yes, you that's going to produce a harvest for the rest of your life. It's, and I've said this, and I've said it to my children, and I know we laugh about it, but I am a preacher. Yes, you are. A, a preacher <laughs> simply means that this is not something, a title or something I put on and pull off. It is at the core of my being. I am a preacher. Amen. But I'm a preacher of righteousness. I don't preach a lot, a lot of things. I preach righteousness. Now, so I can retire from being a senior pastor. I can retire from being this, this, but I'll never be able to retire from being a preacher yes, come because on. <laughs> it is who I am. And so God wants to take the word to put me in a position that I can do or be what I am. Oh, My oh, personality oh. might be, I don't know if I can do that. I don't want to stand up before people. I, listen, he'll put me in a position that I can fulfill it. All right? Let me read the Amplified Classic and we'll be done. Matthews 4.4 4 mm -hmm. in the Amplified Classic. Mm -hmm. But he replied, it has been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone. Come on. But by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. God's word will sustain you and me. Whee! God's word will give us joy. God's word will give us a direction in darkness. Some of the time we don't know what to do because it's not just praying. We need to get into God's word. Yes, and pray. thank you, Lord God. Amen. So that God's word can illuminate. God's going to speak to us through his word. That's God's talking to us. His word is alive. Well, I pray, God, that you got that. I'm looking forward to next time. We're going to talk about our families now and how Satan does <laughs> to keep us separate. It's going to be interesting. to say the But right now, let me just pray for us and Praise God. Father, I pray that this word Thank now, you, God. that you were custom fitted for every one Thank of you us. For your word, God. Because, Father, every one of us need your word. Every one of us need you to establish us, to strengthen us, to encourage our hearts. Glory so this day, God. in the name of Jesus, for everyone that's hearing under the sound of my voice, yes. that God, you would custom fit this word for us. You know Hallelujah. what we, each one of us need. I've given a general word, but I trust you, Holy Spirit, to custom fit it for me and for every one of us in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're here and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, whether you like it or not, you work for Satan. To whom you yield yourself to obey to that person you belong. Now, I have good news for you because you can change your employer. You can change your life forever by coming to Jesus Christ. Listen, God did not put you in this planet just for, you know, happenstance. You, you are no, uh, 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 what am the word I'm looking for? You, you are not a problem. You are not an accident is yes, the word I'm looking for. But you are here by design by God for God, such a time as this. Your mother and father came together and you are a result of that. But God chose who would come. Thank you, Lord And God. he chose the time you would come for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. But you will never know your purpose without Christ. And so you must be born again. Oh, Amen. And those of you who may have given your life to Christ, but you walked away, it's time to come home. Come on. Can't come you on. see what's out in this world? Can't you see what's happening? Everything is unraveling. We're getting close to the end of time. You need to be in the ark of safety. Come on here. Yeah. It's called Jesus Christ. So I want to pray for you. Right now, indeed, I want to lead you in a prayer that if you're willing to do this today, your life can be changed forever. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those thank who are Lord. hearing their father never made Jesus the Lord of their life. Father, I implore them today. I plead with you today yes. to be born again, to be born of God's own spirit so you can walk in the destiny you, that God has designed for you but for the foundation of the world. I plead for those who may have walked away yes, that Lord. God, your Holy Spirit, and now is now is dealing with them about hallelujah. coming home to you. Hallelujah to God. Glory. So this day, God, hallelujah, it's the day of salvation. Yes, this day is the day of deliverance. 
this day is the day that your future get changed. Thank you, Lord God. You need to be born again in Jesus' name. So I want to lead you in a prayer. If you never made this decision before, or for those of you who walked away, you need to just repent today and come back. Your father loves you. And he's pleading with you to come home. Let me pray for thee now. In the name of Seth, I want you to repeat after me. Father, I'm sorry for the sins in my yes, life. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry that I have worked for the enemy and not for you. But today, today, I want to give you my heart and my life. And I want to serve you, come on now, for yes, the rest of my days. I believe that Jesus, come on, is the Son of God. Come on here. That He died on the cross, said for my sin, that He was buried, and that He rose again from the dead. Glory, glory. He has ascended into heaven. Come on. Say, I believe that if I invite Jesus Christ, come on now, into my heart right now. He will hear me. Yes, yes, he, he will. will come in and save me. So I invite you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. To be my Lord and my Savior this day. In Jesus' name. Oh God. Say amen. Amen. Amen means so be it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you did that, yes. right now I want to be the first one to welcome Hallelujah. you into the kingdom of God. Oh God bless you. God yes, bless you. Lord, today. God. <laughs> Your life changed forever. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Now you need to go tell somebody what you did. Glory Don't God. worry about what they think about it. Hallelujah. And it is important what God thinks about you. Now, yeah. Sister Henderson give you some more instruction and we'll go from there. Sister Amen. Henderson. What a blessing. Come on, Maria. Praise God. We bless the Lord for all of those that have given their life to yes. the Lord today. Praise and God. And those of you that are backslidden and have come and slid right on back slid in. Slid right back in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a blessing. What yeah. an honor. What a privilege. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to give you the church information. And that would be info, I-N-F-O, at Berin Family Worship Center dot org. You can send over an email, mm -hmm. and uh, we want you to do just that so that we Praise can get God. your information and then follow up with you. Or if you want to call the ministry, uh, area code 414-873-8687, mm -hmm. and we will get back to you when the office opens the next time. Mm -hmm. And we want to get some material into your hand Praise in order God. to help you in this walk and in this journey yes. that Praise you God. have just entered into. Uh, we will be mindful to continue to pray for you as you call amen, and amen. leave your information as amen, well. Amen, amen. Uh, Pastor, what an honor and a privilege to know amen. that this day that folks are born Praise into God. the kingdom of Hallelujah. God. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. What Glory an honor, what a privilege. Glory to God. I want to give you just a few more uh, updates as well. Next Sunday, same time, 10 a.m., we will be serving communion. Hey, praise so again, God. Come next Sunday virtually uh, that we will together uh, have and serve the communion. Thank you, Lord uh, God. This coming Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m., we will be again live stream uh, for God. our Wednesday group study. You can go right out to the website at BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org and you can get and download the study notes. If you have any questions concerning those study notes or something that you want to have uh, me ask Pastor uh, on Wednesday night, Send that over to info, I-N-F-O, at Berin Family Worship Center dot org, and we'll try to make sure we get your questions answered. Now, the, the highlight after the word mm -hmm. that folks didn't wait on, that's these birthdays. Come on. Here we go. Let me, let me get, it, get, get it on up here right. Birthdays. Here we go. And we got a lot of folks for June, all right? Hello. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I want to start out, first of all, uh, my uncle, uh, Uncle Alvin, is celebrating his birthday tomorrow, June 1st. Praise and God. I want to just give him a loud shout out. Hallelujah. Inside. Amen. Praise God. And bless the Lord for you and for the example that you are in our lives. Amen. Praise God. And then my sister Cynthia, June 2nd. Come Praise on here. God. I'm going to give you a loud shout Hallelujah. out. Hallelujah. Well. Amen. She just got her AARP card, y'all. <laughs> Why you do that? Come on now. Hey, Cynthia. Hey, man, we give God praise, glory, and honor. Mm -hmm. And then we move all the way 
up to June 4th. I'm going to say one for last, though. Uh, Dad, Donald Swift. His birthday is yeah. June 4th. Amen. Praise God. Come Hallelujah. on here. Thank Amen. You, Amen. We bless the Lord. Y'all ought to be giving him a loud shout out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then on June 5th, mm -hmm. we're going to be celebrating um, Sister uh, Shormie birthday. Amen. Wow. June 5th. Praise Amen. God. Give her a shout out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then on June 5th also, Minister One Shonda Davis. Come on. Come on here. Bless God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise and glory. Mm -hmm. And then on June 6th, you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Minister Denise Cole. Come on what? here. Come oh on here. God. We bless the Lord for you, Mother. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise we God. give God praise yeah. and glory Hallelujah. for the mothers in this house as mm -hmm. well as the spiritual daughters in this house. Praise we God. give God praise and glory. Mm -hmm. I say you ought to celebrate large. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. But celebrate safe. Amen. Now, I didn't miss one, but I want to take some time on this other one. Mm. You know, June 4th is also one Walter Henderson the third. I got my horn. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Praise here God. Here we go, y'all. Uh-oh. Got it. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And, you know, I wanted to take the time to say, Pastor, yeah. uh, first of all, you know, uh, I know they all call you Pastor, and I do sometimes as well, because mm -hmm. you are my Pastor, yeah. amen, Praise God. and I honor the Lord for you being my Pastor, but you know what, mm -hmm. you're a Pastor at home first, Thank amen, you, Jesus. Thank <laughs> you, Lord God. Hallelujah. and so because of that June 4th, mm -hmm. my Pastor at home will be celebrating his birthday, yeah. <laughs> there you go, there it is, we good. <laughs> It's called BG. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I amen. say give it up for Pastor Henderson. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, yes, he will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what's going to be the age, Pastor? Go and tell him. Be chapter 67. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I bless him. Yeah, and I honor the Lord for my pastor this morning. Praise for God. my husband. We give God praise and glory for all of the birthdays. And so we're celebrating birthdays from May 31st mm -hmm. through June 6th. Praise Next God. Sunday, any of you that are birthdays are after that, mm -hmm. we will then be celebrating your birthday. Praise too. God. Again, a reminder, communion. I want to also take the time on yesterday. Uh, we, um, a new spiritual daughter has been uh, joined to us. And uh, Brother Isaac and Sister Janeska got married on yeah. yesterday. Yep. The covenant of marriage. Here Hallelujah. Here we go. There we go. Praise Lord, God. Hallelujah. We, honor, we honor the Lord for the covenant of marriage. Absolutely. Amen. And we give God praise and glory. Hallelujah. For doing. The two has become one. One. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless we God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Lord. Amen. We do, uh, again, delight to do the will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. and we're so grateful for Berin Family Wishes. Thank you, Jesus. We want to take the time to thank you for all that you do in the way of checking on us, encouraging mm -hmm. us, encouraging us with the Word of God. Praise God. We long to see your faces. Mm -hmm. And somebody say, we'll see you soon. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we are grateful for this uh, avenue to be able to preach and teach the Word of God mm -hmm. and to also to see you. Uh, from this side, as you give your different comments, we honor the Lord for each and every one Amen, of you. amen. And we are so mindful Praise to God. pray for Hallelujah. you. Amen. 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 Pastor, you, your heart is set. Absolutely. You're going to get some ice cream and cake on June 4th? I might Hallelujah. break down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might break down. Have to go. Don't y'all send no something. ice cream and cake up nope, here. Nope. Amen. No, please don't. Amen. Please don't do that. Be juice. Come on here. <laughs> All right, praise God. Hand up, praise God, right hand. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. Yes, thank you, and Lord. And keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Glory to God. May God bless you and your family. Mm -hmm. Keep you safe as you continue to go out praising, worshiping. Hallelujah. You. We praise God for you. God's peace be upon your home. Glory to In God. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we love you. Peace be unto you. Praise God. May God keep you and bless you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And we'll see you when we see you. Amen. God bless you. God bless. <laughs> hey,